A thousand years ago, there stood a church on a crossroads on the turnpike to Fenton. The church, called St Peter's Ad Vernicula, was old even then, and the hamlet that grew up at the churchyard gates was called simply Stoke. For the next few centuries, nothing much happened as the village of Stoke continued its sleepy existence on the banks of the River Trent. Then, around 300 years ago, something big started to happen, as Stoke began to make a name for itself by making pots. In the early 1700s, Stoke was home to the Wealdon Works, one of the first big potteries. Two of the young apprentices were to go on to make quite a name for themselves. One was called Wedgwood, and the other Spode. By 1776, Josiah Spode had bought a small pottery in the centre of Stoke. In a few decades, the sleepy village had grown into a bustling industrial town, bristling with the bottle kilns of its many potteries. The next 150 years were pretty good. The pottery barons invested in fine civic buildings, like the town hall, the library and the Minton Memorial Hall. The town was full of ceramics factories, employing a large and skilled workforce. While conditions were hard, the town prospered. Through boom and bust, war and peace, Stoke's pots and plates were exported all over the world. Today, Stoke-on-Trent remains a world centre for ceramics, but in 2008, the Spode Works closed down. Its kilns cooled and 400 people lost their jobs as its gates were closed, seemingly forever. This couldn't have come at a worse time as the economy went into recession and the town of Stoke suffered. Its shops closed, its people found it hard to get other jobs. The question today is this, can we use the Spode site as a catalyst for the regeneration of the town? This was the question asked by the council of a team led by Urbed. Urbed's answer was to say, forget big expensive development schemes that need lots of grant and may never happen. Start small and grow your own regeneration using the rich network of artists and businesses in Stoke. The first step has been to turn the huge factory floor of the works into an exhibition space for the British Ceramics Biennial. The exhibition in what has been christened the China Halls opened in September 2011, less than a year after the council commissioned the plan and prompted the Guardian to state that there are signs of revival in Stoke's most famous industry. The China Halls will host further exhibitions and events in the months and years ahead, but it's seen as only the first step in the regeneration of the site. Routes have been opened up through the site and space has been made available for artists, workshops and performances. Two performances have already taken place in parts of the site by the Rees Stoke Group and local artists have piloted a gallery and a drop-in centre next to the site's main entrance called Shop. The aim is to grow this activity, allowing artists, galleries, shops and cafes to colonise the space gradually over time based on models like Camden Lock in London. As confidence grows and more people are attracted to the site and town, values will rise and more investment will be possible. The Spode site has always attracted tourists, and the plans include a new visitor attraction based around China Bank Court. In the long run, we hope to rebuild the bottle kiln that stood here until recently. However, like the rest of the site, plans are to start small and grow things slowly. The Spode Museum Trust, working with the National Trust, have been discussing plans for the gallery and the Blue Room as a home for the Spode collection, as well as a way of illustrating the long history of the site. Linked to this, the plans include proposals for a ceramics retail attraction. The idea is to create a cluster of factory shops representing many of Stoke ceramic companies and can grow into a major attraction, something that a number of companies have already expressed an interest in. So, how do we make this happen? Much of this activity can happen without significant subsidy, but the council has spent a large amount buying the site and in the current economic climate is under intense pressure to recover this money. The question therefore arises whether we can do something on a large open section at the rear of the site that can generate some money as well as attracting people and activity to the site. The most likely possibility is a supermarket, something currently being explored in more detail. If this happens, other possibilities are opened up, a new bridge over the A500 creating a direct link to the station. This in turn could open up the rear of the station for development, including station shops, parking, a hotel, and in time, a convention centre. The master plan prepared by Urbed includes all of this. However, the strategy is not a grandiose, all-or-nothing plan that risks never being realised. 
It's a step-by-step -step process of growing activity and confidence, something that has already started with the biennial. Just as the Spodeworks helped turn Stoke from a hamlet into a thriving town, so the development of the site today can play a similar role in its regeneration.